My name is R. Crosby Laws, and this is News from the Can. This is my new favorite meteorologist, Tim Pandagis. He's on 13 News now. Weather, they live stream on YouTube. They have, you can look him up on YouTube. Um, he is, he, this guy's got a really warm personality. He's really likable. You know, it's, I just, I, I just like watching the guy because he's just like, I don't know, he's just, he's really neat to watch. He's super knowledgeable and um, he knows what he's talking about. He gets the models out. He, you got an understanding of what's really going on by the time he's done. So I really like this guy, Tim Pandagis. I look for him because the bottom line is it ain't over, folks. Hurricane Maria is out there. Um, Hurricane Maria is forecast to become a major hurricane by the National Hurricane Center. And that is up, by the way, from the day before. And the day before, they had it forecast to become a hurricane, and then it was going to be a major hurricane before it hit Puerto Rico, and then it was going to slow back down to a hurricane. Let's look at the legend once again. What these little letters on here represent, D is for tropical depression, S is for tropical storm, H is for a hurricane. The winds don't go over 110 miles per hour. Major hurricane is for maximum sustained winds greater than 110 miles per hour. So now... Today, the forecast is for Hurricane Maria to become a major hurricane by 2 p.m. Tuesday and to remain a major hurricane through 2 p.m. Friday. And it's going to be in this general location here. So I like to look at the Atlantic satellite. And there's a little artifact here that makes me think that Maria is going to track more west. And it's this right here. You can see there's this little rotation here. And here's another thing, too. Watch these storms. Watch how these storms blow up. So you can see like a movement. There's an air, you know, there's a generalized pressure. I don't want to call it a pressure gradient, but maybe like a pressure gradient type of, there's a, there's, the, the, you can see a movement here. But anyway, there's a, there's like a rotation here. Let's go to Venture Sky. You know, this is a modeler, it's, and it does forecasting. This is today. I think this is why it's a lot of the forecast tracks have this Maria following Jose. If you watch these little vectors, they just get sucked right up in here. But notice that you have air currents coming down this way, and, and there's air movement coming this way, and you see these steering currents coming up. But you don't see that circular momentum in this model the way you see it here. See that? So that's one of the things that tells me that this storm is going to track a little more west. Because this these currents come down and if you follow, if you go to Benchu Sky at 2 p.m. Friday, that's on the 22nd. Jose has moved further up north, and you see these air currents here. I just don't see this storm breaking more north. I see it breaking more along a similar track, perhaps, as Irma. Um, but you know what? My opinion is, you know, you're definitely, obviously, going to, well, oh, what the hell's going on over here? Jesus, look at this. That's kind of a radical looking thing there, isn't it? This right here. So those are your water temperatures in the 50s up there. 77 degrees, 80s. Wow, look at that. 84, 85, 79, 82. As you get lower water temperatures, then you don't, you know, your storm has a tendency to kind of peter out and cooler water temperatures. So, again, this is 2 p.m. Friday is what this model is showing. There's two people that I, that I check with before I talk about storm tracks and things like that. One of them is Tim Pandagis, because the guy, he's kick-ass. Another guy is Mr. MBB333. This guy, he does all kinds of stuff. This guy has a great channel, and he's got a, he's got a fabulous voice. This guy's got a great voice for video um, in general. 
It's a, he's just got a real compelling kind of voice, and he's a humble guy and stuff. And it just I don't know. He's got his presentation is very good. In any case, he paid this guy, uh, Mr. MBB three thirty three. Link is in the description. And here's his Hurricane Maria, and he's you know he'll tell you you know this is one you want to you want to pay attention to this storm. But in any case, he he does everything: hurricanes, weather of all kinds, meteorite activity, space weather, sunspots. Of course, this has to do with space weather earthquakes, volcanic activity. I mean, this guy's got his finger on the pulse of a lot of different environmental things that can impact our lives. So um, I don't agree with every jot and tittle that he says necessarily. There's a very small amount of conspiratorial stuff that he does. Most of the stuff that he does is factual. He's got a lot of different resources, and he's paying attention to a lot of different things going on that are all related you know, space weather is related to earthquake activity and, you know, it's all tied together. So this man here has got it. He's got it going on. So I always check and see what he's got to say about it. He's saying pay attention. You can see his, you know, he's looking at the models. The link is in the description. I'll put up his latest video and uh, you can check him out. Anyway, I like to give this guy a shout out because, like I said, he's got a, The guy's got a great voice. I just like to listen to his voice. You know, he's got. <laughs> it does. He's got a great. He's got a great video voice, man. I'm telling you. So anyway, um, basically the message here is: don't go to sleep yet. Keep yourself supplied. Stay stocked up on your water. You know, you can get water out of your tap if you have clean water jugs that you can store water in, reuse and store water in, you can store that, you know, your tap water. If your tap water is currently potable, that's another thing, too, because there are some counties in Florida and other across the Caribbean where the water is, like, not potable right now. They have boil water orders. So if you have that in, in effect and you want to boil your water, and then you put a few drops of bleach in it when you when you store it. You know, and do a little research on that. And I got to tell you, you know, we, we've got 25 gallons of water stored in the house here that we got out of the tap. And I thought, wow, man, that seems like overkill, you know. And the storm Irma, we really dodged a bullet. It didn't get as bad as it could have as it could have been. If it had landed as a Category Four or Five and come up the East Coast, we would have been that would have been a shit sandwich for real. But I also want to point out that the European model from back over here somewhere when it was Irma. The European model nailed it. It had that storm track coming and right up the middle of the state. That was the European storm track. So I pay attention to the European models. They spend a little bit more money on their models, and they only run their models twice a day versus the American models, which run four times a day, typically. So that's the word around a campfire, is that the European model is a little more reliable. Um, and so we got 25 gallons of water. And I thought, wow, that's overkill. Come to find out, we came within a hair's breadth of, have, of having a boil water order. Gainesville Regional Utilities General Manager Ed Bylarski, I think is how you pronounce that, found out they were, they were short on gas. The water treatment facility runs on generators when there's no power. They needed to buy 8,000 gallons of gas. <laughs> 8,000 gallons of gas to keep the water treatment facility running. And they had uh, 2,500 gallons available. Bylarski credited City Commissioner Harvey Ward with solving the dilemma. Uh, you know, Ward made a few phone calls and secured 32,000 gallons of fuel from almond oil. Um, you know, almond oil, you know, they came through in a pinch. And But I'll tell you, if they could have dropped that ball and they didn't, they, they're like heroes, uh, in my book, because this, there are other counties across Florida that they have boil water orders, you know, just because the the rivers came up. And, you know, whenever you have flood conditions, a lot of times your flood conditions will necessitate having, you know, boil water orders for your city because it's just the water gets contaminated because of the, you know, because of the flood condition. So these guys really came through, man. They're like heroes. And um, so we, we dodged that bullet. But, you know, lucky for us here in the house, we have 25 gallons of stored city water in big jugs that we have. So you don't have to necessarily go out and buy water. You can, if you've got, you know, keep your old jugs somewhere. I know it's a pain in the ass because they're bulky. You can store water for flushing toilets in five-gallon buckets and things like that. You know, um, make sure that you stay stocked up with provisions and things like that because it ain't over yet. You know, in Florida, it ain't. And this year especially, you know, it's just got that, that vibe to it. Hurricane season goes from June 1st 
to November 30th. So we're in the middle of September. This is like high hurricane season right now. This is the spaghetti models for, this is the Euro spaghetti models for uh, at hashtag Maria. Too soon to tell, but these are the, these are the, the spaghetti models and it's, it's pretty divergent. But my money, I'm, my money's going to have it going more west. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it just goes right on out to sea. We don't want to, you know, we don't want any more trouble. That's for sure. But, you know, I'm just saying that, um, you know, pay attention, you know, stay tuned um, and um, stay stocked up. Um, they're just now, you know, Publix is still, their coverage are still pretty bare uh, and a lot of, they're getting a lot of stuff in. Uh, but they like they had one case of water that that I like. They have they have Publix brand spring water uh, cases of that. So Atlantic hurricane season goes from June first to November thirtieth, sharply peaking from late August through September. The season's climatological peak of activity occurs around September tenth each season. So. Yeah, we got a ways. We got two and a half months before the end of the the season. Now, of course. It's a bell curve, and it looks to me as though this, you can see this is water temperatures, I believe. Temperature two meters above ground. There you go. Two meters above ground. That's what it is. 78 degrees. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, that's going to pretty much tell you anyway, essentially what the water temperature is. In any case, there you have it. That's Friday. This right here is Friday at 2 p.m., and you see that little thing whipping there. That's... Wow, that's that's incredible. Stay tuned. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. Fenchu Sky um, is an interesting model here. You know, just to sit back and sort of gaze at. <laughs> uh, it's just really fascinating. Um, so, y'all make sure to keep your provisions together. I, I, you know, we, we had a lot of people without power. Um, there was um, over 69, 69 people. The last I heard it was 69 people lost their lives from Irma. So, you know, our hearts go out to those people that, you know, that lost loved ones and things like that. You know, it's just there were a couple of scary mo moments during the storm. You know, when the power was out, you know, I kept seeing the Alan Sorkin thing. What would all this look like? Well, mass migrations food and water shortages, spread of deadly disease, endless wildfires, way too many to keep under control, and storms that have the power to level cities, blacken out the sky and create permanent darkness. Are you gonna get in trouble for saying this publicly? Who cares? Mr. Westbrook. We want to inform people, but we don't want to alarm them. Can you give us a reason to be optimistic? Well, that's the thing, Will. Americans are optimistic by nature. And if we face this problem head on, if we listen to our best scientists and act decisively and passionately, I still don't see any way we can survive. Okay, Richard Westbrook, Deputy Assistant Administrator of the EPA. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is Newsnight, we'll be back. It was, uh, there was a couple of tense moments uh, when uh, Supercell came through and uh, and things started hitting the ground and you know you can feel it you can feel it in your feet you can feel it in you know you can feel that vibration of heavy things hitting the ground and it's it's always disconcerting you know it's you know you're it, it's humbling it's humbling and it's always you know um, you know we're so lucky that you know it could have been so much worse if Irma had come up the east coast of Florida as a category four or five or even up the middle of the state as a category four or five it we it would just be a whole nother shit sandwich you know we we really dodged the bullet and so you know just thank God for that and our power was only out for a couple of days as a matter of fact for a stone's throw from my house here they there there were people that we knew that had power and internet through the whole thing and then they lost their power and their their internet a couple of days later when somebody was cutting up a tree, <laughs> cutting down a tree that had, you know that was that was messed up and and they accidentally a limb came down and took out their power and their, you know their internet. So that's just you know the crazy stuff that happens in a hurricane. So anyway, y'all be safe out there. You know, pay attention to what's going on and um, and that's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Laws and this is news from the can. Thanks for watching. See you.